picture of a. Eh? Oh, I was just that one. Is that morning all? How are we all doing this morning? Up bright and early. Who we got in the house? Who we got in the house? Ah! Oh, there was chat and there it was gone. Ah, oh, chat's back. Morning, Fred, Steve. Let's see if I can scroll back. Who else we got? Morning, Nick, Martin. Ah, morning, Mr. Walt. How the devil are you, sir? Morning, Martin. The old uh, summer's gone, like winter. Morning, James. Morning, Dave. I'm only here to watch the catches. We're not playing cricket, mate. We're going to do a bit of wood turning, isn't it? Eh? Hey, a bit of wood turning. Morning, John. Morning, Baz. So, what have we all been up to? Oh. Morning, Alicia. Uh, you heard my voice coming over. Morning, Stuart. Morning, Douglas. Now, nah, can you turn it? No, I can't turn. Morning, George. Morning, Adrian. Morning, Derek. Morning. Last one. Wolf. Morning. David. Morning. Yeah. What's the time? Oh, we've still got four minutes. Hey. Morning, Graham. Hi, Stace. I'll be nervous if Steve Jones logs in. Steve Jones would not log in to watch me spindle turn, I can assure you. That man is a step above everybody else. He's not very good with a bulk house though, so I'm told. Just made that up, really. I wouldn't say that to his face. Well, Les... Agent, why is the skew so dreaded? It's a tool that most wood turners buy, put in the rack, and just look at it and say, one day. Morning, Ian. Morning, Jim. He did ask when I was on. Oh, dear. I'm not worthy, I tell you. You ain't seen me with a skew in my hand, have you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got a cable there. I won't mess about with it. Joe set it all up again this morning. I reached over for a cable and I got the look of death. Do not mess with my cables. Yeah. Morning, Michael. How the devil is one? Morning, Steve. Stace, you love your skew. Yeah, I love my skew. I've got it framed. I've got a picture frame, nice glass panel in front of it, and it's mounted like a golf club on the wall. You'll be able to see it later. Inside, though, it's yeah, Joe's just said, we've got a sign above it, break glass in case of emergency. Oh, you've had a go, Steve. Plane cutting with a skew. Can't sort of put your video up, can you? We'll show it in a minute. Save me having to get a catch. Morning, Miss T. Morning, Terence. Well, 
Well, we're on the countdown. We're on the countdown for a 10 o'clock start. Start now for 20 seconds. Ah, Joe says start now because it's 20 seconds. So, this morning we're going to take a look at the dreaded skew. So, here it is. Get that into shot. Can you see that? Yeah, this is a dreaded skew there. It's got a nasty sharp point up there and a nasty sharp point down there. Dreaded. So, you've seen it. I never actually said I was going to turn with it, did I? So, I said I was going to have a look at it. Well, we've had a look. So, today I've got a nice bowl blank. And we'll do a bit of bowl turning, what do you reckon? Only joking. Right, so the dreaded skew. A lot of people worry about the skew. Uh, I've got to say, I am not a spindle turner. It's not what I do. Um, but, as a turner that teaches, and as uh, a registered professional wood turner, uh, I think that we should be able to master all the basic tools. So, I am not a master master with this. If you want to see a master, uh, you can look at uh, Les Fawn and uh, Gary Rance uh, and the man to really look at, in my opinion, is Steve Jones. Steve Jones is a master. Uh, he's on YouTube, uh, Woodturner21. And if you want to see some skill with spindle turning tools, Steve is your man. So I'm going to attempt to do a little bit with a skew. Uh, show you what I do when I teach a skew. Uh, we're going to do it in two parts. We're going to do a little bit of that. Uh, and then we're going to go on to do a bit of spindle turning and make a little box. Um, we might have a bit of colour thrown in for luck. You know, you like a bit of colour being thrown around. Oh, Richard Raffin, yeah. I mean, there's loads of them. There are loads and loads of real good spindle turners that use these tools proficiently. So, the basics. Let's come to the basics. Someone asked on Facebook uh, to show an oval skew and the different skews, so I'm going to do that for you. Uh, what happens, tool manufacturers being tool manufacturers, they, uh, we gone to overhead, just mess around. This is the basic skew. Uh, nice sharp edge. Um, I sharpen on the pro edge, of course. Uh, the angle here, I don't know, 30 degrees, 15 degrees, something like 15 degrees. I'm not very good with angles, but there. Uh, and you, you roll the skew by twisting your wrist. So people find it, it snags up a little bit or they're not comfortable with it or we're gripping too hard. So the tool manufacturers, that's why I invented an oval skew. You see the profile of the tool is oval, and the idea is that will roll around quite easily, and that's why they do it. Same sort of profile on the top. The oval skew is just a little um, idiosyncrasy with it. When you sharpen it, because of the profile of the steel, it's quite awkward to use on a, a jig system, because on the pro edge, you rely on the edge of the tool in the jig. Well, this goes over the top. So you have to sort of line it up and get it in there. And then you can sharpen it. So it's not insurmountable. The other skew that's done, commonly used. I don't use one of these. Mike walks the man. He likes these. Um, I'll take it out of the packet, you see. It's coming out of the packet. Because I don't own one. Don't use one. And they do a radius skew. So they sweep the curve round, bringing back the corners. So they're out of arm's way when you're turning. But I'm going to show you a way to tackle that with a normal skew. So I only use a normal skew. I've got an oval skew. I don't use it. We'll do a couple of cuts with it later on. I'll show you that there's no real difference. But that's what we do. So the best way to start, in my opinion, with a skew... Um, is to start with a small piece of wood because if you get a catch it's not as bad so we're gonna just get 
I've got bits of rubbish everywhere. Just a small bit of wood, uh, a bit like pen blank size, like this. Um, we mark the centre up. I'm doing a guesstimate centre. I can just eye that in. There's somewhere near it. Bring the tail stock up. Oh, forgot. Important. When you're spindle turning, this is when you want to make sure your headstock's lined up, and I haven't done that. So I'm just going to lock my tail stock off here, wind my centre into the spindle. The wheat a bit so couldn't get the handle under. Rock the headstock around so it's evenly all the way round. It's there's no light between the um, live centre and the spindle, the inner of the spindle. Then lock my headstock down, lined up. Uh, that was a little trick that I learned off of. Um, who did I learn that off of? Someone uses it. Can't remember. Anyway, it will come to me in a minute. Well known Turner, works for Axminster. Starter for 10, it's the quiz. Who's the guy that works for Axminster? Does a lot of turning. Can't remember his name. Come to me in a minute. So, anyway, so I've just trapped that between centres. So we just got a little spindle blank. Up. No, um, it is. It is. Uh, Cornwall. Comes from Cornwall. Uh, right, so. What I've done is I've raised the tool rest up a little bit. I'm going to cut Colwyn way. That's it. Sorry, Colwyn. Um, so I've raised the tool rest up a little bit. Now, when we rough down, we normally use our spindle roughing gouge. Whoop. Can't get the tools out of the rack. Uh, and rough down with this. But you can rough down with a skew. So with my safety glasses on, let's turn the lathe on. Now what I find with the skew, just want a tad more pace. Just move that tool rest so I'm on the tool rest. About there. Um, tad more pace. So I normally use the skew. I find it works better in the sort of 6, 1500 to 2000 range. We're spinning now at about 1700. And all I'm going to do is I've got the tool in my side. I've got a bevel, so I lay the bevel on, raise the handle, tilt my wrist over a bit, and just come along the wood. Bevel rub, lift, come along the wood. Now, a lot of people worry about the angle, uh, and our problem, our catch areas, is if we start bringing our handle round away from our body and twisting our hat, right hand if you're right handed towards the lathe bed then you bring this sharp point the toe heel rather toe toe sharp point first away into the catch zone bang there if you bring your handle round faster than you're moving along you come down and bang there's your catch on the heel the long point here, the toe, that gives you a nice spiral catch. So you touch your wood all the way up. The heel catch gives you a real clout and takes a big chunk of wood out and ruins your project. So what I do when I'm teaching, what I say to people, where we want to cut is in this zone here. Just off of the heel. So I colour the skewing three quarters of the length of the skew, black, like that. And then what happens when we start cutting, you see the shavings come over in this area here. If you start to move your hand, I'll demonstrate this in a moment, you can see the shavings start coming up to here. So that shows you're moving your hand towards the lathe rather than keeping the tool parallel. And if you move the other way, you can see the shavings coming down towards there. So you can just readjust yourself. So you've got the shavings coming over the area of the felt where you want it. So if we come here, I lift, and you can see I'm cutting now just on the bottom of that black. 
if I start bringing my hand round, you can see I'm now coming down to the corner. And if I start bringing my hand towards the lake, you can see the shavings now coming up towards that point. So we try and keep it in this zone here. We just gently slide along. Like so. Now I'm falling off the tool rest at the end. Now that noise there, we don't want to hear. That means we're pushing too hard with the tool against the wood. It should be silent. Let me just move that tool rest down a little bit. I just keep flicking off at the end. Just a tag. There. Too hard. Just drop the handle a little bit. And then we're just playing along here. Just by laying the bevel on with a little lift of the hand, I can pick the cut up anywhere along the wood. Another one there. There. Now if you go forward, you cut the wood. And what you'll see some people do is they'll cut in reverse as they come back. You raise your hand and get a peeling cut backwards. I'm not very good at that one, but you can do it. I should have stood practicing my stew last night. Instead I was drinking red wine on a pub quiz. There. So, and you can see the finish you can get off the tool with a planing cut is really smooth. You know, so that's your basic skew cut. Now we can use the long point to do a V cut. And all we do is slide the tool up the rest, handle hot low. As we meet the wood, we just raise the handle and stop. That puts our first line in. Then we come over at an angle with the bevel. Same idea, raise the handle. Just push in, then I'll come round the other side, same idea. And then we've generated a little V-cut. Um, and then you can roll a bead with these things, but you use the lower point here, and you just tilt it in, twisting your wrist over as you go. So if I put another little V-cut in here, There. Now this is where the catch happens, right? I'm not very good at rolling beads with a skew. I normally use a spindle gouge, but for the fun of it, we're going to have a go. So we're just going to pick up the cut here with that lower point, roll over into there. Then we come back the other way, just pick up the cut there, roll over into there, and we've generated our bead, like so. It's as simple as that. So. There's no fear of the skew, really. That's the way it works, and that's the basics of it. If we were using an oval skew, it would work in exactly the same way. Pick the cut up. I don't think I've sharpened this one. Yep. 
you can see it just works in the same way. There. You can generate a cove with the skew, uh, you do your beads with the skew, all that sort of thing. So there is the basics of a skew. Okay, so without further ado, what we're going to do this morning, we've looked at the skew, but we're going to use the skew in a bit of turning. Now, as I say, I'm not really a spindle turner. What I do is I do a lot of hollow forms, a lot of bowls, a lot of art pieces, so I'm normally with me bowl gouge. I use a skew, I practice a skew every time I turn because I cut me dovetails with it, like a scraper. Um, so I'm gonna knock that piece of wood out of the way. If you've got questions about the skew, ask away. I won't know the uh, answers, but you can ask away anyway. Yeah, I think, Mike, you're quite right. People uh, grip the skew quite hard because they're nervous about it. And then they get a catch. And the biggest problem then is because they've had a catch, they hold on even tighter. And the next catch is even bigger. You've got to control the tool. It's got to be held in your hand. You don't want it flying out your hand if you get a catch. But you just got to get comfortable with it. So the best way to get comfortable with it, uh, when I teach, is just cut some pin blank sized pieces of wood or um, smaller and just run up and down, have a go at turning a bead and stuff. If you get a catch, the catch is so insignificant because the wood's so small, um, the, it doesn't bother you. And then once you're comfortable with that, then start to, on bigger pieces of wood. Adrian, uh, can I see its application on small spindles, but larger spindles? What larger spindles? Um, larger spindles, yeah, it works on larger spindles. I'm going to show you that when we make this box in a minute. Um, you don't really use a skew on bowl turning. Uh, if you're highly skilled, then you can use any cutting edge to turn something. It's not recognised as a bowl turning tool. It's recognised as a spindle turning tool. Um, but you've got someone that's highly skilled with a cutting edge. And Steve Jones sharpened a spoon and turned something. You know, you can do it. So, But some people use the skew as a scraper on the outside of a bowl. But you've got to be careful there with the points because they're easily going to dig in. Right, I think that's uh, where we're at. BB turning morning. Mark Jumper, good point, Mike. Right. Joe's watching questions. He'll shout them out. So that was the starting. So what we're going to do now is we've got a bit of ash. We're going to make a box and we're going to use the spindle. Oh, the camera was moving. I thought I had to move. No, I was raising it so that you could see. In a minute, what I might do is run around the workshop and see if Joe can catch me. <laughs> catch me if you can. Um, so, here somewhere I've got a pencil and I thought I had a straight edge. I've got a straight edge, so I'm just going to mark up the centre. So, corner to corner. Corner to corner. Corner to corner. Corner to corner. That gives us a centre point. Fraddle in the centre. Joe saying Malcolm just said something. Well, you can do it with your right hand. Hold on, let's come back to this. It's just something there. There, with wood turning, it pays to be a little ambidextrous, um, but you can do it. The headstock gets in your way a little bit. Let me just lock this one off. I bought extra blanks with me. I travel a long way today for this demo. Um, extra blanks with me. 
in case someone asked something and wanted to see something. So let's get that up there. Let's just bring this down really quick. It's going to take me longer finding where I'll put this skew. There we go. Right, we're just going to whack the speed up. So I'm going from right to left, it's easy. But if I want to go from left to right, on with right hand, I just move my body along the lathe a little bit, roll that. It's all still in the side. And I can plane like that. I'm still doing this right handed. If I want to go left handed, uh, I'm not so good with my left hand with the skew, but it shouldn't matter really. And you can hear that bit of vibration because I push heavier with my left hand because I'm not as comfortable there. I'll less, lessen the grip, lighten the cut. And you can do left or right, you know. You just position your body so you can get to where you want to be. Sorry? Oh, didn't you? You didn't see my dance moves, Joe said, so let's just do it again. I think he just keeps pushing me, Joe, because he wants to see me get a catch. I know none of you want to see me get a catch, because that would make me look pathetic. And if Sir Steve is watching, he wouldn't want to see me get a catch, so we're going to try not to get a catch. Right-handed, tall into the side. Lift onto the cut. If you hear a noise, you're pushing too hard. Lessen your pressure on your grip. That's right, ended right to left. If I want to go left to right, I move my body down, put the tool into my big fat belly, lift my handle, twist my wrist anti-clockwise, just a tad. Push in too hard, lay the pressure off, there, and if I want to do it left handed, I shuffle myself to the right hand side of the lathe, left hand into my body, little lift, little cut, and that's where I push too hard, because I'm not a left handed turner, and I complain along there. And if I come back the other way, I'm more central. It all comes off my body. The tool doesn't move. Lost me cut there. Just lift me angle a little bit. Lay me pressure off a bit. There. It's as simple as that. So far, so good. Huh? So far, so good. Now I've made a nice little round spindle. I haven't got a clue what you would do with that dibber. Make a dibber. Yeah, not my sort of thing. Dibbers, dobbers, magic wands and all that. So, what I'm going to do, I always use a stab. I'm going to just up the rate size of my stab a little bit. This is just a little half inch one because the wood was small. And somewhere here, I don't want that great big step. I've only got the big step and a little sped. Uh, there's me. Hold on a second. Go and find me other step. No. I'll find it. Lost in the shaving somewhere. And I had a sweep up in the week. I found it right under my nose. I was going to say, I had a sweep up in the week, tidied up my workshop round the foot of the lathe, and I, for a funny feeling there, I must have dropped my stab in the shavings, and it's in the bin now, but it's not. I put it somewhere safe, just couldn't see it. So, we've marked centres, we've used a centre punch just to get a little centre point, pick up the point 
of air dryers, bring up, oh, unlock the tailstock, bring up the quill, just pick up the point on our Dry stuff. Um, I use a Pro Edge. Uh, I used to sharpen with a wet wheel system, and I used to sharpen quite well, well uh, perfectly well with a wet wheel system. Wet wheel systems, in my opinion, take a bit more maintenance because you're dressing the stone, topping it up with water, wiping the water off the side where you splashed it all over the place. Uh, where the Pro Edge. Simple, bang bang, job done. So that's what I tend to do. Um, so that's the way I sharpen there, Dave. I've just removed that little tool rest to put in a bigger tool rest because the wood's a bit bigger. And I'm bringing the tool rest in just on the centre or just above. Lock that down, lock that down, lock that down. Line that up there. Make sure she spins freely there. I'm going to give me a step a tap through the headstock to set the teeth. Quarter of a turn on the... I forgot what the parts of the lathe are called. A uh, quarter of a turn on the tail stock to push the crew in. So now we're nice and firmly trapped between centres and we're free to spin. With all wood turning, the first time we start this up, stand clear, turn the speed on. Obviously some of you have got straight on to 500 so you would have to do that with this electronic i can just turn it up i'm just going to bring it up to a speed hang on could you say a little more about where the tool rest should be when using the spew right i'm going to or show you that on the size of right it depends on the size of timber i'm going to show you this on this piece we're going to carry on with the skew in a bit uh, and I'll explain the way I do it. It doesn't mean that I'm right. Uh, there are far, far, far more experienced turners with a skew than me. Uh, I'm just trying to give you the starting point, and if you practice enough, you'll probably be 10 times better than me within an hour. Um, a little story. Years ago, years ago, five years ago or something, uh, after I've been turning for about a year, I went to have a two-day session with a fellow called Stuart Mortimer, another excellent spindle turner, uh, because he does spiral twist toller forms to die for. So I wanted to learn how he did it. So I went along, and we were standing there. He said, right, we're going to start with a skew, and do a bit, a quick bit of turning with the skew. Uh, so I said, okay. He said, you all right? I said, yeah, I can use the skew, no problem. Uh, and I've been practicing back then. I used to practice for every tool every day. So I said, yeah, I can turn with skew, no problem. So he said, right. Well, Stuart Mortimer, quite a big bloke, big hands. He turns, he's only got one speed, on and off. So Stuart, his plan is you just turn it on and it spins. Boom. He gets the skew and he goes, grips hold of it runs down the tool rest one way, runs back up the tool rest another way, runs down the tool rest, and about five passes, this thing was round. I looked at him, looked at the piece of wood, and I thought, oh. And the next thing, he's got the skew, uh, and it's in his hand. I was picking up a spindle roughing gouge. He's got the skew, and he's gone dump, 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 straight lines. Dump, 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 part of the V-cut. Dump, 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 V-cut's done. Then he goes, dump, 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 dump. Oh, you can't see. So, oh, no, hang on. Okay. right, dump, 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 dump. Within three minutes or less, he had a perfectly round piece of wood with a set of beads to die for. And I looked at him looked at the piece of wood, looked at him again, and I went, no, I said I could use a skew. He said, yeah. I said, I can't use a skew. I said, because I can't do that. <laughs> but I did come home and practice until I could run a whole spindle length of beads and coves with a skew. Uh, I stood there for an hour a night for about three months, four months, and when I could do a whole one without a catch, I went, oh, I've mastered that, put it in the rack, don't really use it. Use it for cutting dovetails. So, 
right tools for the job. When we're roughing down, you can rough down with a skew, but you'll see most spindle turners go for the spindle roughing gouge because this is the quick way to turn. Now we're spinning around about 1500. I've got my tool square on, the cutting edge square on to the wood. I slide my bevel up, there's my bevel up, lift my handle. And just travel up and down the tool rest. Now you can see there I've got the tool gripped, or you might not see it, in my right hand against my body. And what I'm doing is I'm putting pressure onto the tool rest with the palm of my hand. And I've created a shield. So I don't get a mouth full of shaving. So I can do it by still. There. Another way of doing it is put your thumb down the flute, come into the wood. The shavings deflect off your thumb. It saves eating them while you're trying to talk. My favourite wood is sycamore because that tastes quite nice. I find ash a little bit grainy in the teeth, so I try not to eat ash too much. So we're nearly round. I use the back of the spindle roughing gouge and if it bounces it's not round so I can come back somewhere there that's round now interestingly you can do a planing cut with the spindle roughing gouge if you use the side wing Put the side wing against the wood, that's your bevel rub. And then if I'm going right to left, I bring the handle into my body a little bit more to pick up the cut. And then I just travel along and we'll get a planing cut. I'll just show you that. We're going to go to the stew next. There, there's me cut. And there's me planing cut. We're not quite round as a flat spot there. But me planing cut with a spindle roughing gauge. So you can do it with a spindle roughing gauge. So, the skew. If I want to plane this to round now. My tool rest is just above, uh, just on centre there, there above. But if you want to do a planing cut with a skew and make life easy for yourself, raise your tool rest a bit above centre, like so. Then when you lay your skew on, lost me skew again. You see, as I come along here, I'm cutting in this top quarter and I can get the tip, the high tip. Oh, camera's moving. Uh, I can get the high tip above the horizon of the wood. So the chance of getting a the catch there are pretty remote. But using the black in the way we've just done, raise, raise me bevel on, little lift, just change the angle. And there's me playing in cut with a skew. Okay, right. So what we're going to do is make a box. And here we go for the box. We're going to square the ends off. 
we're going to put a couple of spigots on. Uh, I think it's going to be a bit long for our box. We've got to think about the design of the piece. So I'm roughly three inches in diameter. Work the rule of thirds. So I think I want a box that's sort of uh, around about six inches because we'll bring this shape down a bit. So six inches is going to be about there and about there. So that's dead wood. I don't need that bit of wood. And I don't need that bit of wood. So now I'm going to do what's called a peeling cut or an attempt to peeling cut. So I've got my handle down low and I just come in, pick the cut up and as I pick the cut up I raise my handle vibration as I'm pushing to get me pin there. And that one there. Uh, yeah, you can do all of it. You can do your detailed work. That's what the SKU's for. So if you're, you can do beads and coves with it. You can form shapes with it. We're going to form a shape with this. We're going to make it a bit egg shaped. Uh, and we'll use the SKU for that. Um, and they're all things you can do with a spindle gouge and a spindle roughing gouge. But you can get far more. If you're going to do a delicate finial... We might make a little finial for the box, I'll show you. If you're going to do a delicate finial, then you can bring it down quite fine and put your decoration in with the skew. I just want to push me luck, really. Uh, so now I'm coming the other side. I'm just bringing this wastewood away with this peeling cut in towards the step. I'm cutting just above centre, there, and then as I come in, I raise my handle, push in, so I'm just above centre, to there, and I'm just a tad above centre. So there's our waste wood, we're going to split this around, I've got to get these pegs a bit smaller to fit into the jaw. Anybody watched the demo a couple of weeks back when I was turning pegs down and I turned it too small and the piece flew off the lathe? I'm not going to turn the peg too small for your entertainment this morning if I can help it. So now, somewhere here, I've got my vernia to mark my size for my dovetails. I've lost my vernia. Don't need any sanding. Skew is for a better finish. Um, if you practice with the skew, you can get an excellent finish off the tool. And but you still sand, you know. You but you wouldn't start at eighty grit. You know, you probably start at one eighty, two forty, depending how how skilled you come with the skew. So my spigot is. We're going to do a uh, spigot. Me? I don't know. In general, you can get a very detailed tight cove. Uh, I don't know. Half inch, maybe less. You can get a narrow cove. You know, if you've got a fingernail grind bowl gouge, you can get in there and get a cove. You know, you've got to be able to twist round into it a little bit. Um... From my point of view, 
I'll probably get a cove in half inch or a little bit under. So, now, right point, draw scribe a line, line it up with the left point, give it a push when you're there. So spigot one is about there. If you can see that, there, there's the line. Lines up with my right point. Scribe my line. If you can't see it, I'll put a pencil on it. It's just there. Now we're just going to cut this spigot and I'm doing it in the same way that I do a bowl with a skew. Raising the handle up to my line and I'm just going to flatten off that top. Now I don't need very big spigots for this. I'm just going to make sure it's nice and flat. Little lift and twist. And I'm just going to knock the angle of that spigot down a bit. There. Now that should be square. So we check that there. Ooh, not quite. Let's take a nax off of that. Nice and square. So that will fit in the jaws nicely. Now, I want to put a spigot on this end. But I'm going to do that in a minute. What I'm going to do now is part this off for the lid of our box. And I need my thin parting tool, which I've left over on the other lathe. So I'll keep walking off. As I walk off, I ought to shout out to Joe, chase me, chase me. I don't. Uh, so now we're just going to come in with a thin parting tool to make the lid of a box, which I'm going to put in around about there. So my handle flow, I just lift the parting tool in, and I'll just overlap that cut just a tad. Now I'm just rocking that part into backwards and forwards now. Now I'm going to slow the speed down a little bit because I'm just burning the surface of the wood. I didn't want to do that, but which is better, three quarter or one? Yeah, I think Mike's right, you know. An inch is nice if you're planing, you've got a big piece of wood. If you're going to do, Mike does a lot of goblets, you know, you've got narrower wood. A three quarter is a nice usable size. And, you know, you can get skews that are less than half an inch. And there you get tighter finishing. So, it's just personal preference. I don't think it much matters. I just rock this parting tool left to right. Just cut it just on the centre line or above. Now, this week, I bought my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Of I want to look in there. Yeah, I've got a little way to go yet. Down there. Just supporting the wood with my left hand. I think that's blunt that parting tool. Hold on. Yeah, it's burning rather than cutting. Hold on, let's get another parting tool. I could sharpen the parting tool, but I've just got another one, so let's just get another one. Now I'll just come in with this. This is a thin one, a fairly thin, a little bit thicker than before. So I'm just gonna work that in there. Now 
going to have to open that up. Ooh, open that up. That was just gripping on the wood. Just a little bit. So I've just come over a tag. Half a mil. Just to create a bit of clearance on that part in tool. Now I should be able to get in there. I just let the parting tool go below centre and it whipped up on the uh, up over the uh, top of the tool even with my glasses on I can't see it but they should have just parted off nicely it doesn't matter it's going to be a box so we just twist that off uh, and that's going to be the lid of our box so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this around pick up rough centre pick this up up here yeah. It might throw it out around, but it doesn't much matter because we're going to shape the box once it's joined together. I'm going to have to move the tail stock up a bit. Pick that up there. Just turn that by and see if we're, we're miles out. Be about there, will it? Right. I don't want it too far out. Wind that down. Just bring this into round. We'll get the box together again in a minute. But I want a dovetail and I wanted to turn it around to get rid of that. I'm a bit out. So our box is going to be a bit narrower. I'll just turn that up there. Bit of off centre turn in here. So with the skew, I'm just going to plane along here. I'm just following the tool rest down, knocking off the high points. A bit vicious here. Turn the speed up. And this is like wrapping down with the skew. Just got a firm grip on it at the moment. Now, nah. nah, a lighter cut. That'll tidy that up enough for a minute. So I want to get rid of this. Really, what I could have done is had a smallest drive and I would have got in there and done both the dovetails in one which is the better way but this is my waste wood now, now I've just marked my spigot at this end Left point, just about there. And then I'll just come in, lifting the handles of those up to my line, which is about there. Make sure that's flat. Knock that angle down a little bit. And we'll check that for flat. Yeah, that's a fraction out. There. Now, get rid of that peg. Now, the tool rest is just a bit high there. So let's drop this down. You can see I've roughed this grain up a bit when I attacked it with the skew. But I'm not worried because that's going to come away in a minute. So let's 
just turn that peg down. So it fits in the back of the chuck, the recess in the back of the chuck. Just gentle. So that's our box. Gonna be something like this in a minute. So now we need a chuck. So I need to untangle the tools that I've got laying all over the place here. There, yeah, get that in there, that's that. Get the ruler out of the way there. We we'll need the vernier again in a minute. Knock our step out and we'll go over to a chuck. Throw the step up there, I'll be looking for that later. Spin that on there. Take the nasty sharp thing out so I don't stab my elbow. That's got rid of that. So, now, we'll start with the body of the box, I think. Um, a lot of people, there's debate, do you do the lid first, the box first? I don't think it really matters, but I'm no spindle-turning, box-turning expert. All I know is it's got to fit together. So, there. That looks all right. We'll turn it on, turn it up. That's okay. Put the chuck key down somewhere safe so I know where it is. Bring tool rest up. And now we'll just bring this to round. Round. and now we think about our shape so what I'm going to do here is use my spindle gouge this area here is going to be a dead area that's where we're going to part off and I'm going to create a shape so all I'm doing with the spindle gouge now is rubbing the back of the bevel and then I cut this way just under the tip there to the left so I raise my handle there's my cut There, like so. And I'm not going to put all the shape in at the moment. I just want to get roughly where I want to go with this. Somewhere there, it's going to go in further. I can peel some of this wood off here. Into there. Now we've got a hollow little box. Uh, you could use a, a Falstner bit drilled down into it. Let's see if I can get the tail stock out far enough. Or you can just cut down into it with your spindle gouge. So I'll get my tool rest roughly on centre. Yeah. There, I'm standing side on. Just drop that a tad. And then we turn the lathe on. And now we're just going to face that rubbish off there. There. And now if I go in with the tip, there, I'm just a tad low. Going with the tip, I can drill down into the box and I just rock my hand out sideways. Now I can just, I'm pushing my arm over the lathe bed.
and now I can push into the centre, drill down a bit further and then start pulling that out. Now you can't see too much here because uh, we had big hands in the way. So let's try it out. I can just come in, drill down. And now I just work the side away. Now what I'm going to do is put a little recess in the top here and the lid's going to fit into the box. Joe's coming up to move the camera. So I've got my little three quarter skew and I'm just going to come in here make a shoulder just in here make a flat somewhere there and we've got a little shoulder. I've left a little bit of material on the shoulder because I'm going to blend this into the shape and now I can just bring the there is because I'm pushing too hard but I'm just trying to get the middle out obviously you could use a little hollowing tool for this and we're just going to check out that A lidded goblet. <laughs> right, I want to go down to about here. I'm about halfway. So I'm just going to come in. Drill down a bit more and I'm using my arms. Just to support the tool. Another drill. A lidded egg cup. My plan is a lidded egg is my plan. So I just want to go down a little bit further. I'll keep checking my depth here. About there, about there. Because this is going to come away. So I'm nearly there. Another 10 mil or so. A little push, drill down. Then I'll just get round the lathe. And I'm just sweeping this round to curve the bottom of the box. Tip of the tool, I'm just trying to clean out the bottom of the box. I've just got a little mark in the bottom, so I want to get rid of that. I'm about the right thickness there. I could go a tad deeper, and I'm going to do that while I'm just cleaning off the bottom. So I'm just picking up the tip. I'm picking up the tip, so what's happening inside the box that you can't see, as I pick up the tip, I'm drawing it back in an arc to get a curved bottom on the box. So I'm just coming in again, back there. Yeah. Yep. 
Uh, still got a little mark in the bottom. I want to get rid of that. Sorry, you got my head in the way and everything because I've got to be able to see in there. That's somewhere like it. How's our depth doing? About there. About there. So we're about where we want to be. So that's the body of our box or what will be our box. Still, I've got a little pimple in the bottom. I'm just going to try and brush that away. I'm just really lightly brushing the tool in there. That's better. That's gone. What type of gouge is it? This is just a 3 8 spindle gouge. Uh, spindle gouge has got the shallow C type flute. Um, side camera. Hold on. I can't see a thing because I'm still wearing my glasses. They're reading glasses. I'm looking about things. My eyes have gone. Um, right. So, they're just a little C-type shallow flute, but this is with fingernail grind. So, I grind the corners of the wing back so I can get in, and then I can use the side wing just to do a nice smooth cut up the side of the inside of the box like this. So, that's our inside of our box. So now, the tricky part. Da, da, da. We've got to make the lid fit the box. This way around. In there. Okay? Now, the best way I've found to do this is get some super glue, smear it with super glue, just glue it on. Uh, and then the lid never comes off the box. Only joking. Don't do that. Right. So, we need this measurement here to find out where we're at. And as I turn that, I don't think I'm quite flush on that shoulder. Let me just have a look. Yeah, I'm a little bit of an angle up. So I want to clean that up. So back with the old skew and flatten that off. I want to get that right at this moment in time. So I'm just going to come over. I've got the skew at an angle and just gently... Follow with the skew. Yeah, you can. Not best practice. So, I'm not. I've used the screw, skew there, though, like a scraper, and you get this real fine, just gentle. Just gentle, gentle, gentle. That's been well ground down. I think that was my original spindle gouge. That's nice and square now. That's good. Uh, my original spindle gouge, so that shows you how much spindle turning I actually do. Uh, it's got a flat spot on here. I've ground that flat so that the salty fingernail grind jig can clamp down onto the bar. Anybody would think I'd come from uh, up north, wouldn't they? The way I'm saving this tool. Uh, but I'll be able to get it down to here somewhere. Uh, and then I could make a little detailed pointy tool out of it or something, couldn't I? Or just chuck it away. <laughs> chuck it away. Uh, so, what we need to do now is know the diameter of our box. So, the rim on the lid. So, I just use a vernier. Just wobble it about. Get it central. About there. Lock that off. And then just make sure she ain't moved. That's about right. So I'm about there. This is going to be the little shoulder that I've got to put on here so this fits together. So I'll take this one out of the chuck. What angle grind is on your skew? Uh, the angle grind on my skew. On the Saltby jig, I use a 15 degree... Uh, angle this bit uh, some people like 25 which is a bit steeper I use 15 because that's the way it come out of the packet and I haven't got 
a preference. Uh, as long as I've got a good cutting edge, that's all I'm interested in. So I'm just going to bring this up here, like so. That's locked into the chuck there. Now I'm going to use my vernier. Sorry. That's a Patriot chuck. It's been camouflaged black and red and blue and gold. And you can see I take great care of my chucks. Anything I'm throwing on the wood, I think, is good enough to be thrown on the chuck. So now I'm going to use my marking method. Right hand, the left hand point scraping the wood. Right hand point is just going to line this up. I'm going to get a rough idea as to where my lid is. So I'm about... I really do need my glasses. I can't see the line. Actually, be better actually if I just move this face off. Well, I went a bit heavy handed with the parting tool. You can see I've burnt the wood. Uh, so let's just grab a skew here. And I'm just going to, I don't want to take anything off the outside. This middle is going to come out in a minute. Now, I should be able to see a line now. I've got my glasses on and everything. This is quite... Now, I'm pushing my left fork in because that's where my line is, roughly. I'm just going to bring my tool rest up and I'm going to take a bit of this wood down to this line just here. Just use the pencil so you can see it. Just about there. Somewhere there. Gives us a rough guide. So I'm going to use my peeling cup with my skew. Just come in. Now I'm only going to come in and take a mil or so down to that line. Now I'm just short of the line, so now I'll stop and try my box on there. Too big. Which is a good thing. Better than it being too small. So now I come in and just take a little bit more. And we try her again. Too big. In again. Now this is where we take a bit of time. And you can see she's just starting to grip. Just. Okay. So we're nearly there. So what we're going to do now is take it down. And we want about four or five mil just to sit on the inside there. Somewhere there. And now what I'm going to do is just shank for that off slightly. But I'm taking, really trying to take nothing much at all now. Because I want this to fit properly. I just... A little bit deeper. And I've just taken a tad too much off of that. So 
What I'm going to do is just get rid of that face. Just into there and we try that. And nearly there. Now this has got to be very, very fine. So I'm just going to come into here. And that just took too much again. It was nothing. So, we're just going to take that down a little bit. And just take the nick off of there again. about a little bit now what I want to make sure of is the depth of that there to the depth of this there and it's a bit too thick I thought it was a little bit out so we're just going to take a little bit off of there If you've got another demo coming up, feel free to plug it. There. So that's about our depth. And then there's our box. And she's just fitting on there. That's a bit too snug. So we just got to take a hair off of there. This is real fine stuff now. We're just taking just a fraction off. I think she's about there. But I put my vernier down somewhere safe. I think she's about there, but I'm just gonna take a little fraction of the height off of this. Uh, no, I think it's Sunday. There we go. So we're about there with this. That holds on okay. So there. Tight fit. We'll sort that out in a bit. So we can remove some of this middle. We don't need that. I'm just going to come in here. And again, with the spindle gouge. I'm just going to come in here, flatten that off. I'm just a tad eye there, I think. Let's find out. Oh no, we're right. So I can drill down with that and then open her out. I've got a stand around here. So I'll just use the side wing of the tool as I come back. Get 
that middle there, little drill, and then Just sweeping the arm round in it. Oh, I just want to get rid of that bottom bit. I can just see a little mark in there. Me box, my lid fits on me box, something like that. That's just not sitting down on that shoulder properly. Got a sort of high point there. Oh, that will go right. So, what we're going to do now is remove this from the truck, like so. And we've got our little centers on there and um, we're just going to carefully turn this back between centers to put our shape in so we'll get rid of the chuck Dealing on a couple of small pegs. Um, we hope that this will pick up okay. I think it will, just about the right size. Bring this one up. And we're going to turn this too quickly because we're on these two small pegs. I could saw the pegs off and re center it. That would be another way of dealing with it. But then I'll just bring that in. Tight enough so it's gripped. My box is up here. There. Turn the speed down. Turn her on. And she's turning all right. So now we're going to start putting a bit of shape into our egg box. Because that's what it's going to be, is an egg box. Uh, and we'll start clearing this off. We know we've come down to this sort of depth here. And we're going to go around there. So, I'm just going to use my spindle gouge again. Turn the speed up. I don't want to get any catches here because I'm on these two little pegs. So it's just gently, gently as I go. So I'm rubbing the back of the bevel. And then just raising the handle as I twist in towards the lathe. I'm just peeling this bit away. And we're just all going to roll a big thing. practice with that and see if I can put you two together a thread chasing demo. You what? Ah.
So now I'm going to start coming back to form my egg shape. I just raise my handle as I twist in towards the lathe. I don't want to take too much off because of that thin peg. Raise the handle, twist in towards the lathe. Not too much pressure, just start to speed the wood coming over the cutting edge. Little lift. Into there. Now we start dealing with the top. Eh? So now I'm going the opposite way. I'm lifting my handle but twisting my right hip away from the lathe. Push that away a little bit, a bit heavy handed. Just the twist of the hip, raise of the handle. Now we start dealing with this joint. Start coming back this way. I'm just trying to chop off a bit of wood here. Get that curve in there. Just fine cuts as we go here. I'm going to work back the other way. Hey? Oh, is that what I'm saying? I can put that back on to play. Yeah. 
deep in concentration here. Just trying to get the shape round where I want it. There. Right, so now I'm just going to tidy this up. Raise the handle. Slowly keep this through. Raise the handle and twist. There's real fine cut there. Got a bump in the egg there. Somewhere there. Rolling my wrist over here for the top, what would be the top. There's me little sort of eggy shape. Now, if we uh, give it a quick sand up, whack the extractor on go. I don't want to push too hard, I don't want it coming apart. You find the black spray. Yeah. Has it got that top on it, that aero top? Yeah. And there's a trigger top. Just asking go to find some spray. And we'll whap a bit of colour on this. In there. So now we're going to bring this top bit in a little bit more. Oh, it's all rest to be handy. Blue, now I'll just uh, going to use a uh, silver ebonizing, uh, silver wax. Oh, I've got that. Oh, that's it. Yeah, it's silver one, though. Right, so. Oh, just picking up me uh, spindle there. I just want to bring this in a bit more now. To that peg. There. 
there. We'll come into this peg here. Just gently take that down a little bit more. I'm just brushing the gouge in here. Make sure she's firm enough on them. She looks alright. Okay. So now, for a bit of decoration. I'm going to bring my tool rest up. And here I've got my somewhere. Here somewhere little beading tool which you can't see for looking. Oh, where's that gone? I'm searching, searching for a beading tool. I thought I left it there somewhere safe. Obviously not. I'll go. So I've got a little beading tool here. And what we're going to do now is just put some beads into this. Just rocking this beading tool as I raise the handle up. I should be using a skew, yeah, I suppose, but. I will tell you now that will go horribly wrong but there's a bit of work with the um, skew to show you how it worked and now we're doing a bit of decoration and I'm just using a beading tool because I want these beads all to be even Just hoping I've left enough wood on the inside. We'll find out in a minute. You up? As step centers are sold individually, a drive, uh, uh, you can get a live as well. Uh, a beading tool sharpening is literally on the grinder. I grind this face, lay it against the belt, 45 degrees into the belt, job done. So for easier, this is where I become ambidextrous I've swapped to my left hand on the handle
come back the other way. I'm going to leave the bead on the joint to last. Well, I've got a nasty feeling I haven't left enough wood on the bead where we're gonna where the joint is. Now the reason I've used the beading tool, it makes the beads more even. Uh, I could have rolled you a bead with a skew, a uh, point taken, but to be quite honest, I'm a little heavy handed with it, and it would have landed up in disaster. So, We'll revisit that one. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it works like well, it's got a cutting edge, but it works like a scraper. Yeah, it's scraping the wood away. Uh, I think this one is uh, about. Uh, I can't remember. I think it's about quarter. Six mil, I think. Now I know you've all got your fingers crossed that we don't see the inside of our little egg box from this side, I certainly have, I think I left enough wood, we will find out shortly, I'm just rocking side to side as I raise the handle to roll these speeds over, I'm trying not to push too hard, I don't want the pegs to break off. Uh, this is an Ashley Olds one. It's all be a slightly different shape. They still make the beads. Uh, the reason I use Ashley Olds rather than salt is, is I bought these well before I started selling tools. the do beads. You what? Uh, it's got a beading tool, yeah. Double-ended, so it's two sizes. You'll find a lot of turners will use beading tools if they're doing something like this because it just makes them nice and even <laughs> Did 
Just rocking backwards and forwards. Sorry? Have I used the term mark? Views. Oh? Views. Uh, views, right. Uh, it's a good tool. Uh, it's a scraper. Um, so it works well as a scraper. I prefer to use traditional tools like bowl gouges and stuff. Um, but it's got its place uh, and it works as I say well as a scraper. I'm just not really a heavy scraper user. Nearly there. This is uh, not the most interesting part of the demo. I can understand that. But I had to throw in a bit of decoration and colour because I know there's a couple of people out there that will soon complain if there's no decoration and colour. And I was trying to think what I could do as a spindle, showing a bit of use of a skew and then adding. The other bits as well. Uh, I'm easy. Yeah. Hold on. I'll get one in just a second. I won't use it on this because they're a different size of bead. Well, similar size, but I'm trying to make this fairly uniform. I'm going to try and get one more in there. This might be the famous last one. So I'm just doing this real gentle. Just watching the shavings to see that we're fairly round. Now, this is the danger one on the joint. I think it'll be alright. I've got my fingers crossed it'll be alright. If it comes flying off the lathe then... bit of bounce there and I've just got a little bit that I want to get rid of in there let's have a look I just want to get rid of that wing there I think it'll be all right fingers crossed famous last words So, that's a set of beads in, get rid of my glasses, I'm just going to get a little bit of sandpaper and just gently sand those up. It's the keep walking off day today, unprepared, so I'll get the tool rest out of the way. And I'm just going to get 
in these gaps, tidy that up. Now you can do all sorts of things with this. Ideas, the colouring and stuff. This. Right, so now for a bit of black spray. I'm trying to go into the grooves. I'm getting covered in black spray. Oh, the computer screen is covered in black spray. I'll never learn. Hey? Yeah. I can't see anything on the screen anymore. All black. Yeah, this started to Bit, as you can see, um, so I should just get rid of that. So, yeah, I don't think that was the best idea. Joe's trying to wipe it off the screen. It now is smeared all over the screen. That was just unhappy. Have we got another another can of that. I should have had uh, a bit of paper or something covering but you know what it's like you wouldn't be happy unless I was covered in something so now I'm covered in black what I'm going to try and do is save the monitor a little bit that's better that's spraying in Right, should have done that the first time. Live and learn, except for I never learn. I'll be covered in black now for some days to come, because that, that stuff, the ebonising lacquer, doesn't come off too easily. It's got me glasses, it's got me smog, it's got me computer screen, it's got everything, got the lathe. So we just want to dry that off quickly. But I'm alright, Jack. <laughs> Joe's uncovered this week. The famous Mrs. Oliver's air dryer's coming out. I can't do it. Do we dry this off quickly? Just so it's touchable, really. Move that there, paper go. Now, what I would do normally is let this dry properly, rub it down and give it another coat or two. But for the sake of this today, this will just give you an effect. Yeah. And now 
now the world is your oyster you can I would normally rub these down and then give it another lighter coat of black and let that dry give it a rub down again another light coat of black until it comes up like a glass type finish but Martin's just asked if you're still doing the workshop next week uh no Martin right gone. Huh? Martin gone. right okay uh, I was supposed to be doing a workshop uh, tour with the AWGB uh, Tuesday night. I got a message from their chairman uh, two days ago saying we need to move you to another night. So I said, okay. Um, and they are on about... Uh, I do the end of the month. So I said, okay. Then he come back to me yesterday and said, could I do next Friday? Will we do pub quiz night Friday? So I said, no, I can't do Friday. So it should be sometime in the future. I'm not sure when, uh, but I'll keep you posted. But as it stands at the moment, it's not happening anytime soon. So now what I'm going to do is just part this off Drop that tool rest down a little bit. I just want to come in here and carry my curve on to the top. I follow my shape down with my eye into here. Somewhere there. We'll stop that so we don't knock it because we're getting thin. And then I'll do the bottom. And then what I would do is touch the bottom in with the black. I won't bother today. You've got the idea. So now I'm going to come in here and just part that off. Tall rest of the bit I Get down. Just rocking the gouging. And just rolling my wrist over and making these smaller and smaller. Well, and I just caught the black. Didn't want to do that. That wasn't intentional. But I can touch that in. Just caught the black. We'll just we'll just spray that in. We'll wood spray it in. You can see it as a matty finish. Well, it's wet and it should be sanded down. But this will just give you the idea. We'll take another little bit out of this end. somewhere there now you carry on going normally uh, but because it's wet I can't grab it while it's wet I'm not going to do that I'm going to revert to a little saw and then I'd sand the ends in so a little saw there Little saw there. Another little saw there. There we're about there. So now I don't want to just rip that off because I've got to sand it off there. Same with the bottom.
there. So I saw that off. Then with a bit of sandpaper, I could just carefully sand these over. Like so. And then once I finished sanding it, I could just spray in the tip so you don't see it. A bit like this. Uh, and then let it dry. Obviously, we're now covered in rubbish because I was just trying to do this quick. But once you've done it, you can then coat it in whatever you want. So with this, I'm just going to show you a simple method uh, which looks very effective against the black. Bit of silver gilt cream. Thumb and forefinger and then we just give it a light brush. But you could use the uh, iridescent paints on it. And you have to use your imagination on the bottom that it was black. But there you've got a little egg box. A bit of skew work. Should have done, thought about it and done a bead or something with it. But um, there you've done a bit of skew work and a bit of spindle turning and a little decorated black and silver egg box. But you could use whatever colours and do whatever decoration you like. And now you just need a stand to put it in. Uh, uh, yeah, and Joe's just said you need Other a stain. Around, isn't it? That way round. Yeah, yeah, you could just make something up uh, to house it in. But it was just an idea for a bit of spindle turning demo for you. So, hope you've enjoyed that. I hope a few of you have stuck around to watch it. Uh, I bet I hope none of you are laughing that I'm now. I'm going to destroy this monitor with paint. I don't know how I'll get the black off. I'll have to have a go. Um, so, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it's kept you entertained for this morning. Um, I bet you're happy that I'm covered in rubbish again. But, hey-ho, that's life. So, if we've got anything we want to chat about, any questions or anything, chat. Oh, someone wanted to see an easy beader working, didn't they? So, let me just get uh, an easy beader for you. How close did you get the inside? How close did I get the inside? Not very close because I knew I was going to bead it with deep beads. So. I left the wall fairly thick. Um, I had a nice bit of round wood earlier. There, that'll do. Right, oh, that one'll do. Show you the easy beader. Works in the same way as the other one. Lock that up. Unlock that. There. Bring the tool rest in. Find the short tool rest. Just on the centre line. So this is the little easy beader from Saltby, and it'll work. Oh, we're a bit out there, but it'll work in the same way. Just pushing in, rocking backwards and forwards, wrong way up. It's all rested a bit high. Oh, let's come down. There. 
and then you just work it in the same way. Bit of a push in, bit of a rock backwards and forwards. And there's an easy bead of bead with the tool there. Soapy. Soapy easy bead up. Uh, that's not the one, they meant the one with the point in the middle. With the point in the middle? I don't know the one with the point in the middle. Hmm. Uh, let me, uh, no, I don't know off the top of my head. I'll have to look that up and maybe I will, uh, if I've got one, dig one out for next week so you could see it in operation with the point in the middle. Not sure what that is. I'll have to have a look at it. I'll have to have a look. Right, so that's it. We we're over and done. Uh, yeah, I know it's a salty one. I know the name Easy Beader. That's their beading tool. Um, so I'll have to have a look what the Easy Beader is because off the top of my head, I can't think of it. When we come offline, I'll go, oh, yeah, I know what one it is. But at the moment, I don't. My little brain cells frazzled. They don't know if we're coming or going. So... Oh, do you mean the beading tool as in the one that looks like a wide parting tool? Or do you mean... Hold on a second. Uh, yeah, you mean like the giant parting tool to roll a bead with. Yeah, 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 I know the thing you mean. Um, I would think they're fairly easy. I've not tried one. I'll have a play with one and show you next week. Or put something up on Facebook. I'll have a play with one. I've not used one, so... Um, I would think they're fairly simple. I think. You never know. But I'll have a play with one and show you. They do a different one with a point in the middle and two half circles either side. I'm going to have to look at the book, Leisha, because that sounds different to what I'm thinking about now. Let me, let me do a bit of research. I'll do a bit of research for you and uh, find out. What I'll do is I'll do a bit of research, find out. I can ping you... Uh, uh, ping you over a picture and if we get the right one then I'll play with it from there. Yeah, PM me. That's the way. Thanks, Douglas. You have a good weekend. It's like a B-shape with a back missing. Ah, I know what you're on about. I don't think I've even ever stopped one. I'm going to look. Yeah, point in the centre, I get it, but I don't think I've ever stopped one, so I'll have to have a look. Easy beader, easy beader. Right. Thanks, Martin. Glad you enjoyed it. Oh, competition deadline today for the Garden of England Wood Turners. Cheers, George. Thanks, John. Glad you enjoyed it. It's the right easy beater. Everybody's going to tell me about easy beaters. Till next time, Kevin. Goodbye. Thanks, Leslie. Cheers, Nick. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, it'll be stuck up there. You can watch it. 
Thank you, Graham. Thanks for popping by. Cheers, BB. Might try this one. Have a good weekend. Cheers, Clive. You. Turner's retreat. Don't swear, Mark. Pa, pa. Cheers, Steve. Cheers, Twisted. Cheers, Kevin. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for stopping by. Without you guys stopping by, it would be pointless. Just hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get up to 2,000 subscribers. Hit the subscribe, you know, all that sort of stuff. Oh, uh, and a thumbs up, all that sort of stuff. Cheers, Baz. 814 and a salty cat. Yeah, I don't think I've ever kept them, but I'll check. I don't remember everything. I don't remember my name half the time. Cheers, James. Cheers, Stephen. Glad you enjoyed it. Cheers. Thank you, Derek. Sorry I didn't give you a catch. I should have did a bit more with a skew. Yeah, I can get all the salty tools. No problem. Just... Don't stock everything. Thanks, Jennifer. Glad you enjoyed it. Found it interesting. I just try and do something different. That's not really my style of thing, but I hope we got a we've got a cater for everybody. Hit the bell as well as subscribe. Thanks, Twisted. Right, people, I'm off. Thank you all again for watching. Have a good weekend. See you soon. Goodbye.